Jerry has a uh, an FPGA combination. She's, she's she's combining these FPGA ideas with applied with pinball. 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 We all love pinball, especially nerds. So I wanted to show how to. Um, I wanted to combine the solenoids talk from yes uh, last week with how to drive it with an FPGA and to control the power that you're actually kicking the ball. So what I've got, there's a ball in here and there's a solenoid at the bottom that you can kick, kick up the ramp and then there's the, the FET driver circuit that I was talking about. It's so right down in here. So there's a little FET to uh, control the power. Uh, what's a FET? A FET is a field effect transistor. So it's a three it's a three-legged device, so one you hook to power, one you hook to the device, and the other one um, is the gate that turns it on and off. And the gate of this FET, or field effect transistor, is running to an FPGA board. Some of you might recognize this as the, the FPGA Guitar Hero controller that I was working on. And I have a programmer cable hooked to it. So, And then on my PC, I've got some soft or some uh, FPGA code that I've developed for this. So I'm going to download that into the FPGA right now. So now you can see that the, the FPGA is pushing the pinball up and down. <laughs> and I everybody woo! So this is full power for what my um, FPGA uh, my how much power I'm putting to the, the solenoid. Now if I push this button, I change the pulse width modulation. This is how much power I'm sending to it. You can see it doesn't push up nearly as as far. Now I want to I want to show how you do this in an FPGA and this also applies for a um, microcontroller also. This is not unique to FPGA. Now while she's doing that, let's bring, bring those of you who are just joining us up to speed. An FPGA is a field programmable gate array, and it's basically it's a, it's a transformer chip that you can teach to do just about anything by downloading <laughs> your code. Well, that's so scientific. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, it's like, <laughs> I know. It's like a bullet piercing a balloon full of rice. But uh, it's, it's a little chip that you can, uh, you can teach to be various chips. Uh, by uh, by sending by creating the code on your computer and sending it downstream to the FPGA. So so she has created her own little toy, her own little self-contained toy with a processor. That's she programs it up from the computer, sends the code down the line. She could unplug the computer, just tell that thing to start, and it will. Correct. Correct. Uh, okay. For you, for those of you that watched last week, you'll remember that I. I made a counter circuit that would blink an LED. So this is the same basic structure as uh, the blinking LED. We have a clock input. So this is a regular pulse that goes into the FPGA. So this goes to an input pin. But what I'm generating is a pulse width modulated output. Now, the, the FET driver circuit, when there's a high, there's a positive voltage on a pin, that causes the transistor to turn on, which causes the pinball to kick up the, the inclined ramp. And if you vary the duty cycle, the amount of time that the, the, the pin is on versus off, you can control how much power is applied to the, the solenoid. So if it remains high for a very long time, that's going to drive more current um, on average into the solenoid than if it remains low more time than not. So, Jerry, when it's high, is it sending the pulsed current like that? So, the way the circuit works is you can send a constant high voltage to the transistor, and the transistor would be stuck on at that point, and the solenoid would be pushed up. And if uh, if you if you send it a uh, very short duty cycle, this is across time, so. Um, this could be happening many times per second. So by having it mostly on in a given period, you, you can drive it stronger. So here's a piece of uh, software, or the, the Verilog code for doing this. So like last week, we had a counter 
a free running counter. So we watch for the clock pulse coming in and we just count. This counter is 16 bits wide, it just counts continuously, never stops. Now we go to another piece of circuitry that we're going to design. This is a comparator circuit. So what we're doing here is we're looking at the counter and if it's equal to a particular number, we're going to insert a number here. So we want it to be on for a certain number of clock cycles. We're going to put a number in here when it should turn on. So when it reaches that count, it's going to turn on the pulse width modulation output. So here I'm assigning a positive value to that, which turns that pin on, which then turns the transistor on. Then I continue, the counter is still running, we're, we're looking at, we're doing a comparison, so the counter, if it equals an off time at a certain off count, then we turn the, the solenoid off again. And just so you can see what the, the circuit looks like, this is the FPGA, and we have the counter inside here running. It's running forever. Then we have a comparator circuit, so if it's equal to a particular number, then we drive current out onto this, this pin. If it's equal, a little bit later on, if it's equal to a different number, then we remove this current going out to the chip, I mean to the, the FETs, we turn off the solenoid, and that's how we control the string. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That saves me a lot of money on clown makeup, too. <laughs> you look like the Incredible Hulk. Like well, Trisha's going to yeah, come I over. Feel like and playing and over. Trisha's going to help you out. <laughs> oh, and Dorian. Oh. Smash! I see you. I am watching Dave. I don't think you should be doing that. 